Hello, good evening, and welcome to Istanbul, Turkey. This is the Basketball Champions League. Uh, Galatasaray taking on Bakken Bears in a battle of 0 and 1 3, 0 and 1 teams, and it is the uh, game that was supposed to be played on game day three. Well, it has been a uh, interesting Basketball Champions League season, uh, no doubt about it. Both of these teams suffering defeats in their openers, but a long way to go and uh, plenty of uh, hope. Uh, that things can turn around, but certainly with Galatasaray, came, uh, things came to a head uh, with the uh, dismissal of their coach, uh, Erdogan, or at least they agreed to part ways. Uh, so change of foot there. You can see that already in Group A, Dinamo Sassari winning over Star Tenerife, 92-72 to 72, uh, for this game day. And now uh, here we are, and these, uh, these teams getting ready to trade blows and, uh, well, Bakken from Denmark uh, coming through the qualifying round. Uh, they certainly gave Iberistar Tenerife uh, a good showing in, in the first half. Uh, things got out of hand a little bit uh, late against the uh, former champions. Uh, so you see in Group A, Dinamo Sassari up at the top at 2-0. Uh, Dinamo Sassari followed up their win uh, over Galatasaray with also a win over Iberistar Tenerife. And uh, both Galatasaray and uh, Bakken Bears down at the bottom. Uh, but again, it's early in the season, plenty of time for these teams to turn things around. But uh, instead of having four 18 groups, now you have eight four team groups, and you need to finish in the top two to progress. So Bakken, they come from Denmark, and uh, it's the second time actually that they've been in the Basketball Champions League. Glenn Closey, keep an eye on him. Ryan Evans, Mads Bro Hansen has joined the team. QJ Peterson, Darko Jukic. Uh, Michelle Diouf, uh, Tyler Ongwai, and uh, Morton Sallerts uh, for Stefan Week. And for Galatasaray, Alex Hamilton. Alex Tyus has signed uh, for the uh, the. Turkish Giants, R.J. Hunter. Uh, we saw him play last year with Turk Telecom. He's now with this team. Daryl Macon, Baris Ermis, the Turkey International, Yijit Arslan, Brock Modem, Ragib Atar, Jonathan Williams, all the way down. Uh, a very uh, interesting roster. Uh, Brock Modem, obviously, the Australian who played at the 2016 Olympics and did so well in that bronze medal game against Spain. You might, might remember he played for Valencia last season. And he has come over and now plays here in Turkey. And they're going to need him and they're going to need everybody uh, to really give everything tonight as they try to get on track here in the Basketball Champions League and avoid what you would have to consider would be an upset uh, against Bakken, uh, who hail from Denmark again. And uh, this is a team that if you're not ready to play, they will surprise you. So I'm really looking forward to this as are you uh, a lot of excitement in the basketball champions league already this season and uh well it started for Bakken back in the qualifying round when they had to win a couple of games uh and they did so uh with flying colors uh, to make it into the competition so here they are in istanbul the city where east meets west and uh obviously with the covid restrictions uh the covid uh, the coronavirus pandemic, you know, fans uh, for safety concerns, uh, health concerns, uh, not allowed in the arena. But it's wonderful to have uh, the basketball uh, to be able to show you and for these guys to come out and to play. And Stefan Week hoping to get a big win on the road in Turkey, which you would have to say is uh, one of the basketball hotbeds in uh, Europe in the old, on the old continent. And now Galatasaray, this famous club, you know, how quickly uh, can the recent signing uh, Alex Tyus uh, gel? He's an Israeli international. He's played a very high level. There he is. He comes out. Um, R.J. Hunter, obviously uh, a big name from America. Uh, had some great moments last year uh, with Turk Telecom. Also uh, uh, tried to make it in the NBA. Uh, wasn't successful, so decided to come over uh, to Europe like so many other Americans and, and really trying to make a statement this season in Turkey. So players uh, 
being introduced. Coxel there, you can see also another Turkey international, uh, perhaps doesn't play to the fanfare that he deserves. He's done a wonderful job for the national team whenever he's had his name called, and there he is. So we are just minutes away from the start of uh, this clash between Galatasaray and Bakken Bears. And there you have uh, the coaches uh, exchanging elbows. So a team in transition, Galatasaray parting uh, with Coach Erdogan. And we'll also get a look at the starting fives and the referees uh, with the tip coming up in about three minutes and 45 seconds. Referees will be from Bosnia and Herzegovina, Slovakia and Belgium. Ademir Zarapovic, Marek Kukulcic from Slovakia, and Garrett Jacobs, or Jakobs from uh, Belgium. So it's the Sinan Eridum Dome. You might remember uh, 10 years ago, this was the site uh, where we had the, what was then called the FIBA World Championship when it was 24 teams. Of course, Kevin Durant uh, was the MVP of that tournament for the USA, but uh, Turkey played in the final. Of course, the semifinals uh, were memorable as well. With uh, There we have the referees for tonight's game. Zarapovic in the middle from Bosnia and Herzegovina. And Marek Kukulcic on the... Uh, in fact, I'm not exactly sure which uh, one he is, uh, as well as uh, Garrett Jacobs. Uh, but... Uh, this was the site in 2010, uh, a remarkable, perhaps uh, a tournament that, uh, you know, as you look back on it, was one of the great FIBA Basketball World Cups, as it is now called. And uh, certainly that semifinal with Serbia and Turkey. Anyway, Glenn Closey, QJ Peterson, uh, Darko Jukic, uh, Michelle Duf, and Tyler Ongwai, the starting five for Bakken. And Stefan Week, the head coach of Bakken. And for Galatasaray tonight, it's going to be Alex Hamilton, Daryl Macon, Brock Modem. Uh, Goksen and Koksol and Alex Tyus. Omar Ugarada the, uh, is going to be calling the shots tonight. And I can tell you, folks, this guy is a great coach and maybe uh, the opportunity uh, that he needs. He's long time worked with uh, Turkey's national teams, the youth and the senior team, and uh, really uh, done a wonderful job. So uh, I'm excited to see uh, what he has to offer tonight. Omar Ugurada, again, uh, one of the stars, the young stars of Turkish uh, coaching. Thank you. 
Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the uh, Sinan Erdem Dome in Istanbul, Turkey, the city where East meets West. It's a battle between uh, Galatasaray in the white and Bakken Bears in the black. And it's Bakken attacking the basket to the left after winning the opening tip and missing with the first shot of the game. So now Galatasaray. Coxel gets it to Modem. And the Boomer drives baseline. Ball goes outside, and the shot is good. So the first points of the contest go to Daryl Macon of uh, Galatasaray. Now the three-point shot. And this one off target for Bakken. So, so far, so good. Now Brock Modem for Galatasaray. So far, so good for Galatasaray, I should say. Quick shot by Brock Modem. Drive right into the lane and an easy layup for number 12, Tyler Ongwai. There's Tyus. Not seeing a lot of ball movement for Galatasaray so far. They're putting it up pretty quickly. And then nobody picks up uh, Bakken as they come down the floor. And they end up with an open jump shot. And that is good as well. <laughs> so uh, Ongwai off to a flyer for Bakken Bears. The dump to Tyus. He goes up and scores with the left hand, banks it in. Now the quick pass down low. Nobody was there to guard underneath. And uh, Jukic gets an easy one. So Bach can go back in front. Coxall goes in, misses with the left hand. Pulling up on the break, and the three-pointer is good from Glenn, Clo Glenn Cosey. And now quickly, Coxall misses. Omar Ugurada telling his guys to be patient. Let's run some offense. The ball batted out of bounds. Boy, I tell you what, they've got a 24-second shot clock, and the, neither of these teams... Uh, Seem to uh, be aware of that. They're both putting up shots very early. That's part of it. You want to make the other team work a little bit. Now three-point shot. And, well, Diouf. This is from a long way out. And the block from Diouf, but then the follow by Tyus. Diouf picks up the basketball, puts it up. Boy, real kind of a helter-skelter helter start here for both of these teams. Uh, Alex Tyus gets down low and draws the foul. So Tyus only recently joined the team, and boy, is he already a, a major factor. There's a trip to the free throw line. Tyus with four points and one rebound already. The uh, naturalized Israeli and misses the first free throw. The second one is good. 
So chalk up an assist for for Macon. Ball turned over. Brock Modem hands it off to Macon and Tyus. Well, might have had an opportunity to go up for it. Here's Modem. Alex Hamilton throws the ball back outside to Macon. And Macon puts it up and in. Kosi, he's already hit a three-pointer. The game nodded at 10. Dangerous pass. Jukic comes in and, well, decides not to use the backboard, just lays it up and in. Four points for him. Both of those uh, shots coming right at the basket. Tyus, bounce pass to Modem, stolen. Kosi. Three-point shot now, and an air ball from Tyler Ongwai. And going coast to coast was Galatasaray's Alex Hamilton. I wonder if he was named after uh, one of the famous uh, founding fathers. Jukic gets down low. Three-point shot, good, another one for Bakken Bears, and they go up 15 to 12. Kosi has a couple of three-pointers. And you hate to see a player down, and uh, judging from that, uh, not good. This was uh, Jukic. And then Kosi getting that last three pointer. So it's Alex Hamilton limping off, um, holding uh, kind of his midsection, but also limping. Well, it must have been a nasty fall. Meanwhile, uh, Ryan Evans comes in as well as Deshaun Stevens for Bakken. Williams comes in for. Galatasaray as well as Barris Ermis. So Alex Tyus goes out. Putting it up and missing it was Ermis. Remember he had a big role to play in one of the games for Turkey during the European qualifiers for the FIBA Basketball World Cup. That was Tyus putting it back up and in. So Tyus now on the bench. Uh, Kosi short with this one. And a foul called as uh, Jonathan Williams turns to get into the lane. Hermes. Well, another miss for Coxel. Usually the roles that I've seen Coxel play has come off the bench and been a real spark, but he's had he started tonight. Jukic. Oh, perhaps a little bit too much uh, French pastry on that. And Macon drives, now passes over to Coxell. Still can't find his uh, range. And the dump and the dunk for Deshaun Stevens. So 17 to 12, Bakken in front. And uh, certainly with a little bit of the uh, transition that this Galatasaray team finds itself in, maybe uh, it's going to be a real bumpy ride tonight uh, for the Turkish team.
still have not seen R.J. Hunter. Tyus only signed uh, for Galatasaray for the second time in his career back on November 6th, so hasn't really had that much time with the team. And then obviously with the coaching change. Just uh, a team in a little bit of uh, upheaval. RJ Hunter now in the game and Brock Modem as well flies in and takes the contact so he will go to the line uh, for three point play. Arslan also in the game now. You did Arslan number seven. And this is what Modem can do. He flirted with a you know getting in the NBA. Did not did not stick. He was uh, trying to cut it at the same time as uh, some of his uh, famous compatriots. Here's a mid range jump shot and it's good. So Bakken keep pouring him in the points. Yeah, he was trying to make it modem. I remember the same summer as Joe Ingles. Uh, but he's in Europe and now with a chance uh, to do something here with uh, Galatasaray. RJ Hunter makes the dump down low and then going up a little bit of contact but no call. Jonathan Williams misses. Quick pass and the finish by Deshaun Stevens. Good patience for Bakken. Nice little fake and the shot however by Arslan is off target. Now the turnaround on the baseline is good as they continue to pour in the points. So Ryan Evans having himself a good start to the game tonight. Four points for him. And R.J. Hunter misses with his first attempt from deep. And Galatasaray right now, boy, I'll tell you, the way things have been going, you have to say alarm bells are ringing. They're trailing 23 to 15 to Bakken. Bakken Bears from Denmark. Trying to put the deep freeze on Galatasaray. And nice penetration in the dump and the basket. Defensively, a lot of questions being asked of Galatasaray right now, giving up 25 points. Macon drives in and then misses the layup. So a nightmare start uh, for the team, the home team here in Turkey, being outscored 25 to 15 in the first quarter by Bakken Bears. Eight of 11 inside the arc for Bakken and uh, doing pretty much everything they want.
So the highlights from the first quarter. And really uh, just, uh, you know, the observation uh, that I have uh, from this first quarter alone, you, you know, you just look at Galatasaray. They've got a lot of talent out there, but they need some time on the practice court. They do not look as organized, perhaps, especially defensively as they need to be. And they could be ripe for the upset tonight or ripe to be beaten. Second quarter action underway as Galatasaray try to claw back a double digit deficit here against Bakken Bears. Dump and Williams gets it and goes up strong. Uh, but the main issue has been at the other end of the floor defensively. Can they defend and can they rebound? Pulling up for the jump shot, missing. And speaking of rebounding. Galatasaray are even at 10 apiece with Bakken thus far. Macon tried to go a little give and go action. Good recovery there by Evans. A shot from the corner, bringing a little bit of rain, and it's good from Arslan. And he's got that in his game. So that basket was actually Arslan, not Macon. Three points for him, and now the answer is not there from uh, Bakken's number 12, Tyler Ongwai. So Bakken's uh, lead in danger of disappearing here quickly. You could already see Galatasaray with a little bit more sense of urgency as R.J. Hunter drives and gets fouled. Bakken's biggest lead, lead was Hunter, such a great skilled player. You know he's you know he's good if he uh, played his high school basketball in Indiana. Boy, that's where they really live for it. Actually, born in Oxford, Ohio, makes both free throws to cut the deficit to just three points. Did play in the. Uh, Kind of NBA G League going back and forth with uh, the Bulls when he was with them, also with the Houston Rockets and also the Boston Celtics. And the bank shot is good. That was a two for Bakken to go back up by five points. So Michelle Duff with his first two points. Kosi got the assist. There he is again, same spot, Arslan, same result. And now it's a two-point game. 
There's no doubt about it. He likes that spot on the court. And Omer Ugarada, the coach, will be happy if he uh, ends up in that spot again open. Now the miss and the rebound and the run. Olmas hands it off. Here's Arslan. So there's a pretty good chance he's not going to be left open again from that spot. But here he is, pulls up for two. I tell you what, there's no substitute for having just a great shooter, is there? And Arslan showing that single-handedly, if given the opportunity almost, he can bring the team back. That's three baskets from him, three jumpers. Also the, uh, the two free throws by R.J. Hunter, the timeout by Bakken Bears. Kosi with those six points. Uh, you know, it's an exciting time, folks. You know, it's been a very difficult 2020 for many different reasons, but uh, including the coronavirus pandemic uh, and bringing a halt to, to all sports back in March. And uh, slowly things have been getting back to normal. Basketball Champions League was able to finish its season by having a final eight which was won by Herrera San Pablo Burgos. Just a tremendous commitment by the league to make sure that it didn't have unfinished business. And what a spectacle it turned out to be. It was wonderful. I mean, even though no fans, uh, it was just so professionally done. So again, congratulations uh, to the Basketball Champions League for getting that done. And uh, Again, as the circumstances are difficult still, you know, you can see because fans are still not allowed as, uh, as the world grapples with the, with the pandemic. Uh, we have basketball and doing everything the Basketball Champions League can to, to bring basketball to you, for you, uh, while at the same time making sure that everybody follows the guidelines, the health, the health guidelines. You know, watching it on TV or on the internet is much better than watching nothing. Three-point shot is good coming out of the timeout by Glenn Cosey. This is his third three-pointer. Macon. Now the bounce pass and they read that beautifully. But Bakken then fall asleep, and the ball is stolen away. Arsenal on the break. It's a 4-1 break. Oh, nice handoff and nice finish for Williams. And sometimes just laying the ball up looks better than a dunk, and that one was uh, had a lot of hang time by Williams. So Galatasaray pulled to within one. Doof. Fake the handoff and hits the long jump shot. Oh, what a play. You know, you look at these two names in terms of tradition and history, and you think automatically that Galatasaray are going to be the team that's going to walk away with a victory. But that's the beauty of the Basketball Champions League. You get the best from so many different countries. The ball turned over, goes back to Bakken, and Bakken obviously have come here determined uh, to represent the club. Uh, the people back in their town, as well as uh, Danish basketball. And they are so far uh, giving as good as they're getting. They're leading by three, less than six minutes to go in the first half. And really, it's been an entertaining basketball game. Jukic drives in, slips. Oh, beautiful pass. Great play by Bakken. Uh, chalk up. The assist to Ongwai, and Peterson gets his first two points. QJ Peterson, number seven. Tyus back in the game. His pass to Coxel was tapped, so he didn't have a chance. And now the long shot missed. Kosi again. Oh, what a bounce pass. Look at that. Look at the finish. Oh, what a play by Bakken Bears. Beautiful no-look pass around midcourt. And the finish by Ongwai, who now has seven points. It was Kosi who just made that 
pass. And now the answer by R.J. Hunter and uh, the finish with the left hand. Terrific. Boy, he got hit a couple of times there. He got hit while he was dribbling, and then he got hit again when he went up. And he maintained his uh, composure and balance and finished. And now he has a chance for a three-point play. R.J. Hunter can pour in the points quickly. You see Omer Ugarada really uh, emphasizing uh, the need, I think, to get back defensively. But at the end of the day, uh, he needs time. He's got to have some time to, to practice with this team uh, to get the best out. Look at that. Coxel reaches in. The pass was telegraphed. He goes in, lays it up and in, and Coxel's on the board. Oh, and he goes down after that. <laughs> No intent there. Arslan reaches in and commits the foul. That's the first on Galatasaray. Didn't want to give away the layup. And Omer Ugarada, I think, saying, that's what we got to do, folks. Don't give away the easy one. Just don't commit the unsportsmanlike. Kosi's going to inbound the ball. Offensive foul trying to set the screen on Bach and Bears. Yeah, the foul, Michelle Dilf moving as he tried to uh, get in the way of number 22 uh, for Galatasaray. Uh, Olmas, Iberg Olmas, who now goes out. So it's Arslan, Hunter, Coxel, Modem, and Tyus on the floor for Galatasaray. Coxel passes over to Modem, goes off one foot, and makes the shot. So the Boomer ties it up at 36 apiece. Three-point attempt is good. Boy, the three-point shot by that man right there is uh, QJ Peterson. And it's the fifth three-pointer of the game for Bakken. Now the turnover. And the foul on Modem stops the break. Stefan Week. What was he appealing for? An unsportsmanlike. Well, they could go and look at it, but I think... Nah, I, I wouldn't think so, but we can listen in. Listen to the refs as they go over to the uh, video replay. Unfortunately, we did not get any audio. So the ruling was, in fact, an unsportsmanlike. I didn't think it would be, but it has been called that. So Two free throws and possession. And QJ Peterson makes the first. And the second. 
So he's got seven points. Now, the reason why that's a big play with the unsportsmanlike is you not only get the two points, but you get possession. So it could end up being a four or five point trip down the floor. Depending if they hit a three. Then again, Galatasaray could get the steal, go the other way quickly and get an easy one. What's going to happen? Well, the pass out to the perimeter. And the shot off the front of the rim. Coxel catches all. What a catch, but then he didn't finish. And <laughs> Ugarada, frustrated, kicks the uh, advertising hoarding. Well, another, almost another steal. QJ Peterson puts it up, follows up the miss. But it is uh, Hunter. And another foul has been called. So Evans called for the foul on Modem. Bends the knees, makes the first. Makes two. Behind the back pass to Diouf. Puts it up. Modem. RJ Hunter. And the basket is good. The three pointer for RJ Hunter. He's been as good as advertised here in the second quarter. He's got eight points. That's his first three, and the game is tied. Baca moving the basketball well. QJ Peterson, though, misses from deep. Diouf. Oh, Diof, and what a save by Jukic behind the back and gets it to Diof. Wow, what a play by Bakken. One of the plays of the game so far. Bacon, making the bacon, drives in. Remember Mark Macon? Well, it's a different making, but he's still making it. Peterson drives in explosively and is met as he looked like he was going for the dunk. R.J. Hunter went up to challenge him and come down, comes down a little gimpy, holding his right knee. Watch this. In fact, he was challenged by two people, including Tyus. And R.J. Hunter limps out of the game. That doesn't look good. I don't know if he's hurt his knee or his ankle. And that is a blow for Galatasaray because he was uh, getting in the flow. R.J. Hunter. Arsling comes back into the game. Kosi goes out. Jukic goes out. Darboy comes in as well as uh, Ongwai. QJ Peterson, meanwhile, makes the first free throw and the second. So Bakken Bears keeping their noses in front right now. Now QJ Peterson and both teams, in fact, head to the benches uh, for a Galatasaray timeout. And we're hopeful that RJ Hunter is going to be okay. We'll be getting some treatment down at the end of the bench. Okay. 
some of the highlights. The final minute of the first half. Both these teams losing in their first games of the season. So uh, trying to get off the snide tonight. Arslan crosses midcourt. By keeping the ball in his hands, it seems like it cuts down his opportunities to uh, spot up for those threes. Here he goes. Gets it to Tyus. Wow. Well, when you got Tyus skying high for that one. Oh, the bounce pass was going to have a little bit of panache, but maybe too much from Adama Darboy. And it goes out of bounds. Arsenal again. Game knotted. 45 apiece. Making his pass tapped by Darboy, but then they get it back. Now Modem shaking and baking goes up and had enough wherewithal to get it right back in time and to score. Wow. How about that? He knew exactly how much time he had to hurry up and he got it off just in the nick of time. Brock Modem. Terrific. There should be a couple of seconds left. Nope. Looks like they're going to walk off the court. So we're at halftime. And in fact, it's Galatasaray up 47 45 at the break. So, pretty uh, similar st statistics. Maybe Galatasaray, a few more opportunities at the free throw line. And Galatasaray edging the rebounding. Bakken three more assists. And Galatasaray with one more steal. Modem has nine after that last basket for Galatasaray. Arslan and Hunter with eight apiece. Peterson and Kosi each with nine points. And Ungwai with seven. So here's some of the highlights from the first half. Remember, both of these teams losing their opening games. Bakken played at Ibirastar Tenerife, and after a exciting first 15 minutes or so, they kind of fell away. Galatasaray, uh, meanwhile, uh, in their first game against um, Dinamo Sassari, uh, were beaten, trailed by as many as 19 points in that game. And Bakken have come out and looked more comfortable tonight, but as the game has worn on, you've seen more, you know, you've seen some good things from Galatasaray. Certainly, defensively, Galatasaray left a lot to be desired early, uh, but they've gotten a little bit better in the second quarter. Uh, one big concern for them would be uh, the, the health of uh, R.J. Hunter, who uh, went up to contest a shot by QJ Peterson and, and injured himself, and the severity of the injury uh, remains to be seen. Will, will he come back or not? 
Diouf has been an interesting uh, player tonight with his jump shot and his uh, passing. Also, Jukic had I, what I think was the play of the game, saving the ball in bounds with a behind-the-back pass for the layup. So that was uh, one that you want to make sure that you put on the highlight reel, folks, if you're watching this one. Other action tonight. Uh, Ike at home losing to T. Smoky Minsk and Igor K at home winning over Ankara Turk Telecom. Uh, 11 to 8. Big story yesterday was that Ostin went at home over uh, Areda San Pablo Burgos, 99 to 98. So Burgos winning last season's title. Also, Bilbao lost again, uh, falling at home to Brosa Bamberg. Anyway, QJ Peterson showing his range, uh, and also with Glenn Closey, we, excuse me, with Kosi, we uh, saw some good shooting as well from deep. This was one of the threes from Kosi. how we picked the top score because Kosi's got nine points all on three pointers three of four it's worth mentioning QJ Peterson also has nine points Kosi had that fantastic assist at midcourt uh, for the layup here it is again and the long three by Kosi And for Galatasaray, well, he's only recently joined the team. Oh, excuse me, no, it's Arslan. So Arslan has eight points. I was thinking it was going to be uh, Alex Tyus. I guess this was decided before Brock Bodum hit that last shot uh, to go to nine points. But anyway, we'll say the second leading score, Arslan, both he and RJ Hunter each with eight points. And Arslan really did kind of change the game with his uh, with his jump shot. So we are at halftime. It's 47-45 Galatasaray on top of Bakken Bears. We'll show you the top 10 plays, and we'll be right back.
Well, this battle of 0-1 teams, Galatasaray and Bakken Bears uh, right now being edged by Galatasaray. Maybe the best is yet to come for them. It's good to see R.J. Hunter there. It looks like he's gotten a little bit of mobi mobility back as he pulls his right knee, right foot up. I want to see the matchups, but let's start in three. Three. I want, I want. Wanted to give you a chance to hear what the coach and the players were saying on the bench. And with Bakken, it's 20 hard minutes, i.e., let's go. Let's give it everything to try to get the win. They led for most of the first half, but they trail right now 47-45 here in this Group A game. Well, that alley you pass intercepted by Tyus Coxel over to Arsalan. He's money in the bank, isn't he? He has got a wonderful stroke. 11 points, three of four from three point range.
Dio doesn't hesitate, gets that three right back for Bakken Bears. Wouldn't say it looks a natural shot, but it, he is effective with that long jump shot. That's his first three to go in tonight. Pass red well by Evans, but Galatasaray maintained possession. Five on the shot clock. And Arsland again, this time off the back of the cup. And Bakken Bears with it in the corner, decide to pass it back out. Evans. Jukic. Ongwai. And a foul called before the shot on Tyler Ongwai for holding Brock Modem. Great camera work there. Maybe that's the secret to have those. Uh, Bright orange and yellow shoes for Arslan. That's why he's such a good shooter. He definitely stands out, as does this man, Macon, with those bright yellow shoes. Macon passes to Tyus. He gets rejected by Diouf. Modem gets it back. Calm as you like. Great footwork by Brock Modem. Kosi from deep. Making. Making the bacon. All of a sudden, six-point advantage for Galatasaray. See if they can step on the accelerator. Jukic, quick pass down low and excellent finish. Tyler Ongwai. Oh, beautiful pass. Arslan, and he gets it to Tyus, who throws it down. Boy, Tyus has got an explosive leap, doesn't he? And he likes to throw it down with two hands. Now the three-point shot. Jukic off target, and then coming over the back was Evans. I tell you what, for me, Arslan has been the player of the game. With the shooting, look at that pass. Still a long way to go. Evans takes a seat, now four fouls. Bodum goes to work on the baseline. Boy, such a good gifted score, Brock Modem. And the foul. Well, having trailed by 10 points, Galatasaray now up by eight. If they could get a win tonight, that might just be the tonic they need to really kind of turn things around. Kosi missing it from three-point range. Tyus rebounds the miss.
Oh, behind the back pass by Tyus. Ball goes out of bounds. Well read by Jukic. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, that was probably the best way to try to get the ball to Modem. Could have probably said Tyus could go up for the two. He's so big and strong. Right now it's Darboy, Diouf, Jukic, Peterson, and Stevens in the lineup for Bakken as they search for some offense. Using the glass to good effect was Deshaun Stevens. Tyus catches it in the paint and fouled by Stevens. So Tice goes out and Williams comes back in, similar to the first half. And oh boy, breakdown defensively, Bakken and a layup for Modem. Modem now with 15 points to lead all scores in the game. Bounce pass down low and Coxall. Missed the foul on Jukic. So two free throws coming for Bakken. They'll take anything they can get right now. Well, when you're struggling, even the free throws don't go, and even the offensive rebound and putbacks don't go. What a bad sequence for Bakken. RJ Hunter, good to see him back in the game, missing it from three point range. Nice little pump fake and the basket by QJ Peterson. So he's got 13 points. Making quickly to the other end for Galatasaray. Now a chance for Bakken. This is how they like to play in a more open game. But then uh, Darboe turns it over and Macon, boy, that is a huge sequence right there for Bakken. A four-point swing. Big mistake by Darboe to lose it in transition. Amadar Boy. Remember that play. Thirty four years of age. And now another turnover on Darboy. So a tough minute or so for him. Uh, might have been a tough call on him, to be honest. He didn't really f throw his uh, his arm out there. But anyway, he was called for an elbow. Hunter into the corner. Coxall. Well, if Coxall had made his shots tonight, Galatasaray would be up by 20 points. 
So they're riding their luck in that sense. Are Bakken. Coxell just one of seven from the floor, 0 of four from three point range. He does have three steals. Three point shot is good. So Peterson. And now Modem just lost it. And Stevenson goes in and for the layup, five quick points for Bakken Bears, and they're right back in it. Unbelievable. Oh, very poor by Galatasaray, and they do need a timeout. They lead 62-59. Bakken very opportunistic. But that last turnover was terrible. You can see Modem's upset with himself. That was that wonderful pass by Arslan into Tyus. And that was Diouf with that three-point shot. Modem, I think, continues to be the game's leading scorer with 15 points, although Peterson now has 14 for Bakken. Well, Omer Ugaratu knows uh, you don't make mistakes on purpose. If you're like Brock Modem, it's not going to hold it against him. He's going to go out and make a play. He's like, go make a play. Really, the best the best thing right now is seeing uh, R.J. Hunter out there because he looked like he was in a lot of pain when he left the game. Uh, hurting and uh, he's okay now so we're just under three minutes to go here in the third quarter Galatasaray and uh, the score by the way is not correct on your screen offensive foul called on Galatasaray the score is 62 59 in favor of Galatasaray oh, it's a little kind of a <laughs> interesting uh, sequence as well with that foul Macon goes to the bench I'm not surprised he's a little bit perplexed as to uh, why that was called on him it looked like Gongwai kind of barged into him or excuse me Stevens offensive rebound and Stevens couldn't hold on to it Arslan over to Coxall, Modem. And that was Williams coming over the back. Or no, is the foul called on uh, Darboy? It was indeed. So free throws for Williams. It looked like he had position. He must have grabbed him. Hermes looking on as uh, Williams makes the second of two free throws to take it up to a four-point advantage. Tyus, you can see him uh, getting a rest. He'll no doubt come back into the game at some point in the fourth quarter. Darboy. Duff. Modem has it knocked away again, gets it back. Arslan open, or excuse me, RJ Hunter hits it. So Hunter showing again that sweet stroke. Sixty-six fifty-nine. 
apologies, folks. The uh, score not registering quickly. And now a turnover on Bakken. And Bakken suddenly can't get out of their own way. Seven-point lead, Galatasaray in the battle of 0-1 teams in the Basketball Champions League. Three-point attempt by Peterson, and Williams gets the rebound. And the turnover again, this one on Arslan. And Galatasaray struggling with uh, some turnover issues, especially right at midcourt, unforced. Getting too clever with the basketball. Coxall finally gets it to go, the three-pointer, 69-61. And Bakken will try to hold it. They'll try to take that shot clock down as far as they can. Uh, Peterson got to the rim. Now Modem right at the buzzer for the second consecutive quarter scores and Modem what a play he knew exactly how much time he had look at this fantastic by Brock Modem and Galatasaray have their biggest lead of the game that's a pro for you right there he makes a mistake and then he comes back and he makes a big play 72-61, Galatasaray on top of Bakken Bears with 10 minutes remaining. Here it is again. So the ball had been released before the uh, letting uh, appeared on the backboard, the red letting, and we're just going to double check it. Here it is again. Oh, maybe it didn't release in time. They may not count that. No, they don't. So unlucky for Brock Modem. That was a great chance. I thought at first he did, but unfortunately for Modem and Galatasaray, it has been waved off. So uh, a reprieve for Bakken Bears. He thought he had had it, but it did not. So it's instead, it's 69-61, Galatasaray on top. R.J. buries the three, so at least he gets the three-pointer. R.J. Hunter.
Ryan Evans gets inside and scores. Well, that was desperation time. And stepping out of bounds was Galatasaray. So now Bakken Bears breathes a little bit of life into their comeback hopes. Ryan Evans for three. And uh, Hunter chases down the miss. Hunter, oh, silky smooth. How about that? How about that from R.J. Hunter? And, oh, what a strong pass. Strong move, rather. Strong catch and, and basket by Doof. And Bakken Bears just trying to stay within touch. Great play by Posey. But Diof doesn't capitalize. Three-point shot is good by almost. Where did that come from? He was open, so he took it, and he made it. First three of the game for him. Boy, that is a backbreaker. And now... Posey denied and Galatasaray up 12 with seven and a half minutes remaining. RJ Hunter fumbles it, gets it back and puts it up and in. <laughs> wow. And Galatasaray, who have had some struggles in this game, are now leading it 80 to 65. And Bakken, it's not that they have flattered to deceive, but they have uh, just not played as well in, in stretches. And Galatasaray have also come out and really, really put the ball in the basket here in the second half. Galatasaray now 10 of 20 from three-point range. R.J. Hunter, uh, despite his injury issues, has 19 points in less than 19 minutes of action. He is just a natural scorer. And I think what makes it even sweeter is the fact that he left with the injury. Look at that. I mean, he has the wherewithal to kind of fumble it, catch it. And because he's so good, when he gets his feet set, he doesn't hesitate. He strokes the three-pointer. I mean, that is like a free throw for him. I tell you, it's a team that has a lot of talent, Galatasaray, especially when you consider that a player like Aramis is, is not playing too much tonight. I mean, he's played a minute and a half, and that is a quality player. So a lot of options for Omer Uguratu, and, well, maybe he's going to, Uguratu, excuse me, Omer Uguratu, maybe he's going to be uh, getting the, the full-time job. Who knows? Three-point shot, meanwhile, made by... Uh, number seven, QJ Peterson, who has 17 points. Gets it back to a 12-point deficit. Still some work to do here for Galatasaray. Arsland 
A long two. Good rebound by Williams. Goes back up and kept it alive. Now Bakken with a chance to get closer. Shaking and baking Peterson. And his pass intercepted to Jukic. Duff up ahead to Evans. And once again, Peterson, boy, this time he doesn't turn it over. He gets it back. Cozy would like to take a three. Olmos fouls him with 5.53 remain. And Coxall gets control and puts it up and in. Evans misses from long range. Three point shot is good. Now Peterson's not giving up yet, and, and nor should the Bears. They're trailing now by 11 points. Toss right, appealing for possession, but I don't think they're going to keep it. So Galatasaray keep it. Coxall puts it up, and the three. Boy, he saved it for the fourth quarter, hasn't he? The second three-pointer. Well, I guess the good ones keep shooting, and he is still shooting. He's got two threes now, and that had the, uh, the feel of a dagger. Jukic from the right corner. They battle for the rebound. Bakken. Kuji Peterson couldn't quite control it. Now Macon has it in the open floor. Bounce pass. And Modem fouled as he goes up. Evans thinking that he got all ball there, but he fouls out instead. So tough sequence for him and for Bakken and Modem. Goes to the line. Both free throws good by Modem. Three-point shot, good! Well, Bakken not giving up the ghost yet, down 13 points with four minutes remaining. Ongwai with 12. Macon. And the rebound, Stevens. Clock starting to become the enemy for Bakken. They've got to get points quickly. Diof drills another three. And it's 11 points. 
Ugarada must be thinking uh, possible timeout. Drive and the finish not quite there for Arslan, but he nevertheless goes to the line with for two free throws. Well, I'm always left shaking my head when a great shooter misses a free throw. Nobody's guarding him. Arslan misses the first, and he misses the second. Unbelievable. Oh, terrific drive. And the finish there keeps bucking in it. They're not going away, folks. Cutting it down to eight points. And tough drive and finish by Macon. I hope Galatasaray breathed a little bit easier. Jukic outside it goes, a three. And boy, have that, had that gone, it would have been a little more interesting. Now with 2.20 remaining, Bakken Bears with their backs against the wall here against Galatasaray, trailing by 10 points. Arslan. Tyus, is he going to finish things off here? He's going to go up for the jump hook. He follows up the miss. He loses it as he goes up. And a push has been called on Ongwai to send Coxel to the line. Stevenson picks up the foul out on the perimeter. And Quickly pushing it up, hearing it, the, the whistle, and trying to get it up quickly it was Peterson for a three-point shot, but instead it's just going to be a third-team foul on Galatasaray. Stefan Week hoping an unsportsmanlike would be called. Well, they could look at it. Was he playing the ball? That'll be the big question the big hope for Bakken Ooh, wow. Well, this might, this gives them a chance. An unsportsmanlike has been called. Two free throws. And possession.
So Bakken Bears talk things over. Bakken Bears uh, just goes to show you 40-minute game. Things happen. You get a call that goes your way, an unsportsmanlike in this case. You know, you could end up having a, a five-point trip down the floor and cut that deficit in half. Arslan pleading his case. I, I didn't think it was, but they, they thought it was indeed. And Peterson makes the first. His referee's... Uh, know a lot more about basketball than I do. And Peterson makes the first and the second. So now it's an eight point game. And Arslan almost coming in, and yes, he does. He gets the steal. Un, almost unforgivable for, for Bakken in that case, not to be able to inbound the basketball. That is tragic for them. And great play by Galatasaray. And what do you know, it was Arslan that came out and made the play. So now with an eight-point advantage, they will look to lower the boom here. Macon inbounds it to Modem. And, wow, Macon pleads, says he was pushed by Peterson. And Peterson's not going to say anything. Watch this. <laughs> He's just hoping they're not going to call the foul. And Macon, just his momentum, I think it was, I think it was a correct call by the referee, just a little bit of uh, the difficulty of the situation for Macon. Anyway, it breathes new hope again into the challenge for Bakken Bears. Uh, but once again, they fail to capitalize and turn the basketball over. Now making to Tyus. Oh, Tyus missed it. I think he must have been going up for the dunk and just missed it. No, he's just going to lay it up and in. He plays the game above the rim, so that was uh, an unusual, unsuccessful attempt. Here he is catching it in bounds. Well, it hasn't been a thing of beauty for Galatasaray, but what they needed was a win, and it looks like they're going to get it tonight. Although they do turn the basketball over again, eight points. Jukic takes it down low. Bach can get it again. Stevenson outside to Peterson. And Coxwell with the long rebound. So Omer Ugarata will be breathing a sigh of relief. So congratulations to him, it appears, although with 38.1 seconds remaining, that was the fourth foul on Guay. Crazier things that have happened in basketball, but you feel like Galatasaray going to salt this one away now. First free throw is good. You know, what do you do after this? You have a team talk, go home, get ready to show up sharp and focused and ready for practice tomorrow. Do a And Bakken will be regretting this because they 
you know, looking back on it, they had a chance to win this game tonight if they had uh, executed a little bit better. I think they will know it. And Galatasaray, meanwhile, are going to get a, a very important first win. Will it be enough? You know, will this team be good enough to uh, to get to finish ahead in advance ahead of Dinamo Sassari and uh, Iberistar Tenerife? Well, there's a long way to go, uh, and they can certainly improve, but they will have to improve on tonight's performance. But nevertheless, the big thing tonight was to get the win, and they get it, 91-81 over Bakken Bears. Galatasaray go to one and one. Well, Galatasaray in the end, each team made 11 threes, but a better percentage for the uh, Turkish team. Also, more trips to the line. They won the rebounding battle. You know, you get rebounds make up for a lot of mistakes, and uh, they even uh, finished with more assists and steals than Bakken Bears. And this will be a case of, uh, I told you so, guys, if we focus, we can do it. Hunter had 19 points. Peterson, a game high, 22 in defeat. So Galatasaray posing for the uh, post-game photo. And, uh, yeah, a few more smiles on the faces. So a team, a lot going on there. They got the win. And we'll see what happens uh, the rest of the way for this Galatasaray team. This, their next game will be against the Beerstar Tenerife. So it doesn't get any easier. Well, Arslan, you see hitting that shot, I mean, for me, just because of when he made his plays, I still think he was probably uh, the most important player. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter, does it? All that matters is the win, and they got great – Perform well, you know, solid performances from a whole cast of characters: Macon, uh, certainly Modem, Tyus. Yeah, Galatasaray next week play at Iberstar Tenerife. So, can they build on this and go and get a big win? I think uh, Iberstar Tenerife, the way that they played uh, in their last game against Dinamo Sassari, they could be ripe to be beaten. But on the other hand, uh, maybe they'll turn things around. Uh, they've got a week uh, to get better before that time. Modem, who played at Valencia Basket last season, he'll go to the familiar surrounds of uh, Tenerife where he played last season. And uh, hopefully uh, Gal for Galatasaray fans, they will, uh, they will play well. Uh, for Bakken Bears, you have to think, you know, on any given night you can beat any team. I mean, they, they're good enough. They've got the talent. They just got to execute over the 40 minutes, and they made some key play, key mistakes like that one right there by Darboy, turning the ball over and uh, leading to some easy opportunities for Galatasaray. In fact, that's one stat that we haven't really spoken about, points off turnovers, 18 points for Galatasaray off of the – 15 turnovers of Bakken. So they, they were punished, Bakken, when they turned the basketball over. R.J. Hunter went down with an injury but came back in the second half and played well. That was good to see. So hopefully he stays fit the rest of the way. Another interesting uh, stat, 40 points came from the bench tonight for Galatasaray, just 20 for Bakken. So I think probably the depth issue uh, was a big factor tonight.
Omas uh, stepped up and showed that sweet stroke. And Hunter as well, despite not catching it cleanly, was able to just easily put it up and make it. So here are the standings. After Galatasaray's win, they move to 1-1. One one. Uh, they're in third place behind Abir Star Tenerife, who they play next week in the Canary Islands. Dinamo Sassari up at the top at 2-0. and and Bach and Bears are down at the bottom of Group B at 0-2. Thanks for watching, everybody. Galatasaray win it 91-81 over Bach and Bears.